Now, before we get into the meat of this video, let's just take a moment and collectively enjoy the fact that Richmond are ninth again. It's my favourite footy meme. It just ekes out the Essendon final streak, but it's great. It's fantastic. But they are 6, 7, and 1. They do have a pretty good run home. Let's talk about whether the Tigers are just on a sugar rush under Andrew McWalter, or could they actually cause some damage come the end of the season? Let's go. This video is brought to you by Capital Edge Australia. So let's start this with what I think of Andrew McWalter. Whether that's the most important thing to start with, I don't know. But hey, it's free on YouTube, so let's do this. The first thing that I want to say is a, obviously a massive congratulations to Andrew McWalter. To be an AFL senior coach, albeit an interim one, is still an insanely good effort. Love it. And when they pan to him in the coach's box, he looks so much like a baby dimmer, like dimmeronwish.com that it actually is hilarious. And more than once, if Dazzling's had a, a couple of amber ales in him, I've gone, Dimmer's back. He's not back, but I don't know. Maybe one of his disciples, he's stepping into that role full time. Who knows? What I do know is this. Brett Ratton, David Teague, and Ray Shaw cannot be used in a negative way about Andrew McWalter. You can't say it didn't work with these guys, so it won't work with him. It is pretty unfair to assume that a guy can't do the job properly because three guys at worst football clubs didn't get it going given the fact that they had pretty bad lists at the time, right? Richmond's job is the most attractive we've seen since Chris Scott took over Geelong at the end of 2010. No one else has walked into a coaching job with a list this good, this accomplished, and this ready to go in a long time. Now, does that work for Andrew McWalter in the fact that at some point in the future, Richmond are going to have to rebuild? And you might say, hang on, they might do a Geelong continually top up and always be around that mark. They might do that. I think if we assume that other teams are going to do what Geelong's done as successfully, we're kind of going to go down a rabbit hole that might be unsustainable for other football clubs. Geelong are honestly the exception, not the rule here. So let's stick to the rule until we know otherwise. We don't know whether Andrew McWalter is going to be able to coach with a bad list. Now, I don't think a measure of a coach is coaching with a bad list. you kind of got to deal with the cards that you've been given. I mean, Chris Scott is a great coach. Geelong have only missed the finals once and they've never had to rebuild. Does that go against him as a coach? No! We'll never know if Chris Scott can do a full rebuild. He hasn't had to. That is awesome for him, and his two flags as a coach is more than every other current coach that coached on the weekend. So, beautiful? Really good? Of course it is. That is awesome for Chris Scott and Geelong. Should it count against McWalter? No. Are Richmond playing any differently under Andrew McWalter? No, and that might be a little bit of a problem. Now, you might say they've won three in a row, and if you have a look at their last month, that loss to Port Adelaide is currently aging better and better and better and better the more that the season goes on. And you might say, okay, they're doing exactly what Dimmer wanted them to do with a fresh voice. There's no sort of external drama, and that's good. This is what we thought the Tigers would be coming into the season, and, and you might think that I think that as well because I had Richmond fourth in my preseason predictions, and they're not finishing top four. They're just not. No one outside the top six right now is finishing in the top four, I don't think, with the fact that the run home is coming, of course, for a lot of teams, and you really are going to have to get on a roll. And as we see, it really only is good teams that go on a massive run at the end of seasons, or they're the really young and improving teams that are chalking their way up the ladder that don't end up making finals anyway. So if you're between sort of 7th and 12th at the moment, I don't think you're finishing top four. That's just my opinion. Happy to be wrong. It would be really fun to see for one of those sides, but that's just kind of where I'm at at the moment. But Andrew McWalter gets a big tick, in my opinion. Big tick for what he's doing. He's doing everything right. All of his wins, he's not really going to get credit for because it's going to go to Dimmer because it's his game plan. And all of the losses, even though he's only had one, which was by 10 points, like I said, to Port Adelaide, are just going to be free hits because he's playing with house money at the moment. So he's doing very nicely. Will he coach Richmond in the future? 
Still too early for me to say. I am still going to lean towards the no. But whoever does come in and is the new coach, whether it is him or someone else, they are going to have to get this Richmond side playing something similar to what Dimmer did, mainly because Dimmer got this group post-grand final success, and a lot of their players are still young enough that they have only learned under the AFL system one way. If you are going to bring in a completely new game plan, it is going to feel completely new to the players, and the first year of doing that is going to feel like a rebuild year because they're going to learn how to play the game differently on the fly. One preseason is on the fly, people. Hate to tell you. But anyway, that's what I think about the coaching stuff. Let's talk about the good news for the Tigers fans. The best news is that you've won three in a row without Tom Lynch. Yes, you might say, what about Jacob Hopper as well? As we know, and I mean this in no disrespect to Jacob Hopper, but midfielders are pretty disposable right now. When you think of the best midfielders in the league, we don't look at them as singular parties. This isn't the NBA where one player is going to transform your franchise. We don't have a Giannis Antetokounmpo in the AFL, all right? We don't. There's too many players. We can't do that. Like Ross Lyon said, you, you can't be a franchise player. No such thing anymore, I don't think. But the best midfields in the competition are the combinations of very good players. Collingwood, Port Adelaide, Melbourne. Yes, some of those have got some of the best midfielders in the competition. Of course. Could any of those midfields last with just their best or second best midfielder with a bunch of eh? No, because that's not how the league works. So I think the Tom Lynch inclusion is immeasurably better than the Jacob Hopper inclusion. Although, I think Jacob Hopper's had a pretty good first year at Richmond, even though, once again, his body has succumbed to injury. How Lynch plays when he gets back again, he's going to take that two to three weeks. So you've got to hope that he is back after the bye, the first week or the second week after the bye, getting indoctrinated back to match fitness, and then he's going to be able to go and launch again. He is the focal point. They can't win the flag without him. I know they've played really good footy. I know, I know, I know, I know. They can't win the flag without Tom Lynch. But they did it in 2017. Yeah, Jack was six years younger. Calm down. They can't win the 2023 flag without Tom Lynch. I don't think they can win two finals without him, let alone getting to the granny. But that might be a problem for another day. I really, really like the way that Richmond are putting more pressure on the ball between the arcs. It did feel like late in Dimmer's tenure that the Tigers were putting pretty good frontal half pressure on. Their defensive pressure to mine was still okay in patches. But geez, between the arcs, other teams were just walking the ball out. Even Carlton were doing it in that draw. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. And it nearly cost them the game. And again, who was the man that saved the draw? Tommy Lynch. That draw, though, at 6-7-1, which is what the Tigers are, is going to be paramount to how Richmond finish this season. I'm going to show you their run home in just a tick. But at 6-7-1 with nine games to go, they need to win at least six of them. Straight up, no lie, 12 wins get you into contention. 13 wins, I think, get you into seventh or eighth spot. At 6-7-1, if they win six games, that will give them, obviously, 12 and a half wins. That will either cost them a final spot by half a game or get them into a final spot by half a game. That draw against Carlton could end up wrecking one or both of Richmond and Carlton's seasons. I'm looking forward to seeing which one that is because Richmond's run home is pretty good if you're a Richmond fan. A couple of contenders in there to really test where you're at. A couple of easy kills in there. But every single team on this list pretty much will want to wreck some seasons or will want to solidify their placing in the eight. There aren't that there aren't too many teams left, I should say, that are really going out there and just looking to improve and might not be wanting to surge up the ladder that much. West Coast, obviously, and in my opinion, that's about it. Everyone else is wanting to keep on going, keep on keeping on, get some more games and wins into either their young side, their contending side, or their promising side, and the gap between 7th and 12th is not that much at all. So whoever can get a run on later in the season is really going to deserve their final spot. More good news for Richmond is, if you look at the teams outside of the top four at the moment, I would back Richmond in at their best against the best that the likes of Adelaide, the Bulldogs, Essen, and St. Kilda have got to offer. I really would. Not only have they done it in the past, but I have watched them 
in the last month of footy and they do look fresh. The lease on life is really, really good. So if they make it, can they win some finals? Absolutely. I think Collingwood and Port Adelaide have got them covered 80 to 90% of the time. And I think that Melbourne have got them covered about 60-70% of the time as well. So it is going to take a magical preliminary final performance to get there. And if they get there, who knows? Do I think Richmond are going to win the flag? No. Do I think they're going to play finals? Well, with that run home, I honestly think yes at this point. But we kind of need to talk about the fact that it is going to be a pretty dismal failure if they don't. Like, they had last year, which wasn't their year. For better or worse, we don't know. But they had expectations coming into this year. Yeah, yes, I know. Carlton, apart from the win last week, have been, you know, talked about a little bit. We've seen the improvement of Adelaide. You know, the Bulldogs have copped it, you know, not just from me, but the media itself for underperforming at times. If Richmond don't make the finals, that's not good. And it's not really being talked about a lot. And it could be part of the selfless nature of Dimmer not being in the job anymore. It does feel like that the entirety of Punt Road is playing with house money at the moment. But if they don't make the eight, that is terrible and a disaster. It's really good for the Giants, who have got their first round pick. So I'm happy for the GWS at the moment, who, by the way, are flying under the radar as well as a very good football team and are doing very nicely. But this video is not about the Giants. The Tigers are probably going to get Harry Himmelberg at the end of the season, but that means nothing because, well, they need to focus on this year, obviously. And in some more good news for Tigers fans, if you're still watching at this point, which I hope you are and I hope you've enjoyed, drop the video a like and subscribe to join the Daz Talks footy family. It's a pleasure to have you here. Is they're holding up in what I call finals metrics. And what when you get to finals, disposal efficiency doesn't really mean all that much. Even an elite kicking team like Hawthorne of the 2012 to say 16 era, although they didn't win a final in 16, one of the best kicking teams of all time. They outworked, outmuscled, and outcontested Freo, Sydney, and West Coast on all three of those grand finals. Uh, Richmond, even though they didn't have a great kicking efficiency to begin with in their premiership runs, outcontested a very good Adelaide side at the time, a dismal GWS as we know, and then Geelong, who, before he got injured, still had Ablett, Dangerfield, Selwood, these guys. So where are they at in terms of the contest and getting the ball back? Well, they're in pretty good shape. Check these numbers out. If you're a Richmond fan, those numbers look really good because that's not for the last month. That's the year. That even when you were losing and going like a busted, you're still ranked in these areas. So it really is all about, are you good enough to get there? We don't know yet. Can I see them winning six or seven of those last nine? Yes, I can. Can I see them winning four? Yes, I can. So it's over to you, Richmond. What have you got? Currently ninth. I think you can finish as high as sixth. I also think you could finish 12th. Anywhere in between wouldn't surprise me either. So comment below. Let me know what you think. Where do you reckon Richmond finish at the end of the year, whether you're a Richmond fan or not? Hope you've had a fantastic weekend. I will see you for the second video on Wednesday night. You can check out the round 14 Brandlow brief as well on my Patreon at patreon.com slash dazzalksfooty. Thank you so much to Capital Edge for sponsoring their video. You can find their information and so much more in the description and the pinned comment of this video. Have a good one, guys. Goodbye.